would you love to play golf? such a thing as a perfect golf destination. Planet Golf explores what today's travelling golfer is looking for and my journey takes us to all kinds of locations around the world and I'll be finding out what exactly golfers want and whether these locations come up to scratch. So let's find out where we're dropping into this week. They call this a secret golfer's paradise. It's known for art and culture, food and wine, and beautiful rolling scenery. There are historical towns and villages to recreate the essence of the Roman or Renaissance eras. But has this place now emerged as an attractive new golfing destination? Welcome to Tuscany, a place famous for its culture and history. But is there enough here to attract the traveling golfer? Well, let's find out. Tuscany is a large area in the northern central portion of Italy with a population of nearly 3.75 million inhabitants. Throughout Tuscany there are many fine golf courses and fortunately my journey only allows me to sample a small selection with a mix of inland and coastal locations. Along the way I'll be sampling the true flavour of Tuscan life and dropping into the world-renowned historical towns of Florence and Lucca. I took a two-hour flight from London to Florence. This Renaissance city is the largest in Tuscany with a population of around 500,000. Florence boasts some of the most important and beautiful artistic treasures in the world, but there are none more impressive than the Florence Duomo, the fourth largest cathedral in the world. Its Renaissance dome is a stunning landmark of the city. Entrance into the cathedral is free, making it one of the most popular attractions in the whole of Tuscany. Everywhere you look there are museums, palaces and churches and of course the beautiful Ponte Vecchia Bridge which crosses the Arno River. But this is also a vibrant city with fascinating streets and squares, plus there's great shopping, restaurants and a bustling nightlife. Although very beautiful, this is a hectic city. Amidst the throng of tourists in central Florence, high fashion chain stores are the order of the day and bargains will be hard to come by. Just outside of Florence, I had my first chance to sample golf in Tuscany, here at the Ugolina Golf Club. Well, Ugolina Golf Club is the oldest course here in Tuscany and many believe it to be one of the finest as well. Ugolino was once home to the Italian Open, with Bernard Langer winning just a few years before the tournament moved location. To this day, it still boasts the same championship qualities, with narrow fairways, slick greens and beautiful vistas. Technically, it's not so difficult for the spur player, but it is very difficult for beginners because it's sloppy, but the main feature is, I think, the views. Why do you think people love coming to this region? Well, for everything that you can uh, really look at. I mean, it's full of culture, history and uh, beautiful spots. And now some really nice golf courses too. 
Do you think golf's becoming a big part of this region? Do you think it's becoming really important to Tuscany? I hope so. I think it, you know it would promote tourism, and we need it. And uh, I think uh, having more courses that are really nice is going to help. What are some of the key holes on this golf course? Some of the signature holes. Definitely number nine is a long and very narrow par five with a big uh, pine tree in the middle that is always in the way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, number eight is a small, a small par three, but it's also a, a difficult one even if you have a middle to short iron because if you miss the green on the wrong side, you really have a difficult bunker shot. A nine, I understand, is that the most difficult Par five in Italy, is that true? Well, it's been voted as a, one of the hardest in a, a few years ago, yeah. It's not long by today's standards, but it's, yeah, it's narrow and the green is across and it's uh, with a big bunker on the right, so a lot of difficulty there, yeah. How special is this course to you? Because obviously you've played on tour for a number of years, but you're a member here as a junior and now back here as head pro. It's obviously a, a special place in your heart. Yes, yeah, I, I was a member here when I was born, really. My parents were great lovers of the game. My mother was really here every day, so it feels like being at home. Italian golf's becoming really popular, isn't it? We have the Molinari brothers, Matteo Manassero. It's becoming a really big sport in this country. How nice is that for you to see? Well, the fact that now we have athletes and we have uh, Italians that go out and win. We have a guy from here, Lorenzo Galli, that is on the tour as well. So I think it's very important. It makes me very happy that it's getting more popular. Some memories from the course here and previous tournaments you used to play host of the Italian Open. Yes. I believe last held in 1991. Some great memories I'm sure you remember though as well. Yes, uh, I wasn't here that, that time, but I was here in 83 when Bernard Langer won. I'd met Bernard in, uh, in Florida, so I was keen to watch him. And he, he, he actually, what I remember is um, the fact that he had to go up a tree to, <laughs> to get his ball on 18, on the really? last hole, because uh, to declare it unplayable, he had to rescue the ball. So it wasn't, because he's a very good athlete, for him it was easy to go up, to so get the ball so he was and come down. Up the yeah. Tree. Yeah. From Ugolino, I went up into the hills near Florence to get a real taste of Tuscany. Villa Mangiacana nestled in the winemaking region of Chianti Classico and looking down on the beautiful city of Florence. This 15th century villa was built by the Machiavelli family and some say with the help of the Renaissance master Michelangelo. But one thing's for certain, this is a place where you can truly escape. You can choose a room to suit your budget, you'll be pampered with homegrown wines and local cuisine, and you can even get a lesson on how to cook it. The essence of Tuscan food is simplicity, and not in a bad way. Simplicity because it is simple, but anyone can make it, anyone can prepare a, a recipe. but. It's not overwhelmed by sauces, creams um, that hide the real flavor of the ingredient. I have cherry tomatoes, I have salad tomatoes, and I have the Florentine tomatoes, which are, I love them. Look at this beauty. Everything happens basically at the same time in the kitchen. And so it's a little messy, but that's the fun part of it. Who has the garlic? So I start cleaning one thing and they start chopping a tomato or they start cleaning another veggie. Everyone is doing something at the same time. And for example, uh, these two couples, they didn't know each other an hour ago. Okay. Salute, salute. And thank you for coming. Oh, thank you very much. And now they're all friends ex exchanging addresses, you know. So it's the magic of food made with love. The next leg of my journey has brought me here to the Toscana Resort Castel Falfi, located between the major cities of Florence, Pisa and Siena, and home to some of the region's most beautiful scenery. With 27 holes of golf on offer, players get a diverse mix of challenging holes and breathtaking views. 
The mountain course, a par 72 layout, is built seamlessly into the landscape, and with several water hazards and sloping fairways, it is definitely no pushover. You got the cypresses, you got the olive groves, and if you start driving around, you can also see some vineyards, uh, which is you know typical from Tuscany. And the rolling hills, it's kind of like that picture postcard look when you, when you see images of Tuscany. This is exactly what it is. And that's why it's a great spot to come because it's exactly what tourists will expect when they come to Tuscany. Well, let's talk about the two golf courses, the mountain course first of all. How tough a challenge is it? Well, it's the toughest course in Italy at the moment, but definitely a challenging course, especially for not experienced golfers because you barely ever have your feet on a flat lie, so it's always <laughs> up and down, up and down, side hills, it gets pretty hectic, so uh, definitely a challenge for most golfers. And on the other hand, we have the lake course, uh, which so far we've built the first nine, which is a little shorter, wider, still up and down but not as steep as the mountain course so it's more rolling hills more open views uh, and not as difficult what about the location of this golf course as well nicely positioned in between three major cities absolutely we're right in between siena florence and pisa which are the major or the more well-known <laughs> cities in tuscany uh, you're just an hour from the coast an hour from the beach an hour from florence an hour and 50 minutes from siena so it's a perfect location to come out have a countryside uh, feeling vacation but at the same time if you just wanna you want some life you know you can just drive to Pisa get that uh, city life feel and then come back at night uh, nice people countryside so it's it's really good spot how important is this resort do you feel for Italian golf I think it's probably the biggest project that Italy has had um, lately. I mean, uh, and for Tuscany, it's really important because it puts together the coast and inland. I mean, before we were here, you had golf on the coast, and if you wanted to golf inland, you would have about a couple hour drive. Now we're right in between, we kind of split that distance in two, so people can stay, if not in our resort, I mean, nearby, play golf here, and then go somewhere else on day trips, and it's not going to be, they're not going to be too far apart. Well, these are the sloping fairways we were talking about. Downhill lie, ball below my feet, big elevation change with the green downhill, water left, trees right. What do I do here? <laughs> well, from here, you have to remember three things. First of all, club selection. You have to take a club that takes into account elevation change. Secondly, play the ball more towards the center of your stance in order to make sure that you can swing within balance. You can't hit 100% when you're unstable. And third, aim. So make sure you aim a little bit towards the left of your target, since with the downhill lie, the ball is going to tend to fade a little bit. OK, so if I set up here, how does that look? That looks perfect. Yeah. Perfect shot. Good job, Sarah. Come on. Is that on the green? That's perfect. <laughs> High five. Well done, thank you. But there's a lot more here at Castel Falfi than golf. We're going to be preserving and bringing back to life what was once an abandoned village. And we're actually standing here in, in, the, in the castle, which is 800 years old. And we'll also be restoring this and bring it back to how it used to be. The village is at the heart of the estate of Castel Falfi. The area has hardly changed over thousands of years. Today these buildings are being brought to life as new apartments and leisure facilities, with many keeping their original period features. Tuscany has so much, it's, it's naturally beautiful. The people here are absolutely obsessed with wonderful food and wine, um, as, as I, I am a little bit. And, uh, and all, you know, the ingredients here, the basic ingredients are so good, not just for food, but, but you know, the elements here, beautiful scenery, lovely walks, cycling, and all the villages around are stuffed full of fabulous restaurants and lovely places to stay. So it's a very, very special area. Tuscany is famous for its fine wines, which visitors love to sample from the flourishing vineyards like this. And there are so many different wineries here to visit. So why is the red wine in this region so good? In the middle uh, part of Italy, the, um, the composition of the soil is better for the production of uh, very uh, uh, interesting and full-body red wines. 
especially in Tuscany. There are the most important red wines produced in Italy, like Chianti Classico, Brunello di Montalcino, or Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. Which is your favorite? Of course, Chianti Classico, <laughs> and uh, um, about our production, Chianti Classico Reserva is uh, our top wine and my favorite wine. There are many fine golf courses around Florence like Monte Catini and Poggio de Medici and this one here at La Pavoniere where we caught up with a European tour player who was suitably impressed with the golf on offer. My first experience here in Tuscany was uh, playing at La Pavoniere. It's a wonderful course out in the, the hills here and it's wonderful surroundings with the olive hills and, and wonderful restaurants and food places to explore. La Pavoniere is a beautiful setting. The conditions are perfect. Uh, Arnold Palmer design is certainly a great test of golf. Every year the golf industry comes together to look at the business of golf tourism and development. And this year the Golf Business Forum is in Tuscany, just north of Lucca. A clear sign that Italy is well and truly one of the new emerging golfing destinations of the world. I think uh, Tuscany is uh, the region where you, you, you have everything. Uh, the food, uh, you have uh, the nice view, you have the nice land. Uh. There's all the winemaking and then there are all the sort of beautiful cities of Tuscany like Siena, like Florence, like Luca, which is just down the road from here, San Gimignano. Okay, they can come to play golf in Tuscany because Italy offers uh, food, style, elegance and, uh, and the golf courses are really beautiful. You can really go around all the region and uh, playing golf every, let me say, 50 to 80 kilometers, you can find a nice golf course. The next leg of my journey has brought me here to the coastal golf resort of Vasilia, just north of Pisa, nestled between the Apuane Alps and the Tyrrhenian Sea. Founded in 1990, it's growing as an attractive resort for golf lovers. Built among stunning landscape, golfers are tested with a blend of slick greens, carefully positioned bunkers and many water hazards. The golf club here is, is well known for most of the rich and famous players in Italy. And there are so many sportmen that come here to play, especially in the summertime. Tell me about the sculpture here by the green, that's very important for this golf course. Yes, the sculpture is from a Japanese artist, Kani Yasuda. We have two different uh, works for the master. That one, which is from the number one and 18 holes, is called uh, uh, Beam of Light, and it's also the symbol of the club. How much would you like to see Italy becoming one of the most popular golfing destinations in Europe? Do you think that will happen? I think they will happen. At the moment it's not a very important golf destination, but uh, uh, golf will come to be very strong in Italy, especially in some part of Italy. Tuscan is one of these. But the resort has so much more than golf. Golfers will love the 19th hole, a gorgeous clubhouse where you can grab a spot of food or a glass of wine. A short journey from here is Lucca, one of the most popular and visually stunning cities in Italy. It's easy to see why. Luca's historic centre, with medieval towers and nearly a hundred churches, is completely enclosed by its 16th century walls. And walking along the wall promenade provides one of the best ways to enjoy the sights. And there's great art to be seen everywhere, even in the most unlikely places. Beautiful bustling streets and squares, restaurants as well as high quality shopping outlets make Luca a place that appeals to many. leg of my trip I travelled south along the coast to the town of Falonica, close to one of Tuscany's newest and most popular golf courses. 
The Golf Club Toscana was founded in 1999 and immediately became a hit with Italian golf journalists who voted it among the best new courses in the country. Back nine is um, very interesting. It's the most beautiful part of the course. The front nine is, is tougher. It's a course really you can play 12 months a year, but the best months for golf are April, May, June, um, July, August, a little bit hot, but uh, we still get golfers coming in September, October, November. Uh, people still come in December playing golf, so it is a little bit cooler, but as I say, for 12 months a year, it's, it's fine for golf. Tuscany is a golfing destination. It's growing, isn't it? It's been, it's been put on the map. Yeah. Do you think a lot of people still don't realise what's on offer here, though? No, because still a lot of people think that uh, golf is a is a rich person sport, which is not. And um, it's it's boom time now in Italy, obviously through the the tour pros, um, Manasero and Molinero. They've they've built up golf in Italy, perfect really. So we're getting a lot of new Italian players, which is important for for Italian golf. And finally, compare Italy to some of the other southern Europe destinations. You've worked extensively in Germany. Yeah. I'm sure you're aware of the situation in sort of Spain, Portugal. How does Italy compare? Um, Italy is relatively new for, for golf. Obviously uh, when I was younger we went to Spain and Portugal. That was the golfing uh, European countries but now Italy is coming up and uh, Germany is where I worked for, for over 20 years. is a different level because it's a different climate. Uh, what, here you can plan, you've got four months of sunshine with very little rain so people can, can come here and actually plan rather than get three days of sunshine and then a week of, of rain, you know it is, so that's, that's, uh, that's the benefit here for the people coming here. Well as well as golf, Tuscany offers plenty to do. Here's our list of the top five. As cathedrals go, the Florence Duomo is a little special. It's stunning both inside and out. Luca is a must-see experience. Climb the 130 stairs to the top of the Guanigi Tower for a stunning view. Visit one of the many wineries in the Chianti region for a true taste of Tuscany. View one of the many impressive galleries or museums to see unforgettable works of art and ancient treasures. We'll get up into the hills to see so many picture postcard villages and enjoy some home-cooked Tuscan cuisine. Well, that concludes our series. I hope you've enjoyed our golfing journey around the world. Bye for now.